first one um, section of our presentation it's a diagnostic imaging. You should remember that a personal and family they should be obtained for all pa uh, patients. So as a good doctor, as a good student, you should remember about that about um, seeing patient, palpation, auscultation, and percussion. Clinical manifestation may be different. You should remember about previous lecture we said about that. Firstly, it's renal colic. It's a form of severe abdominal pain, often accompanied by high or low temperature, nausea and vomiting due to cilia ganglion stimulation. Here you can see a picturesque um, image of these symptoms. Uh, you should remember that uh, this renal colic, this pain on sets uh, suddenly, often during the night or in the early morning. So patients with such problems can be provided in clinic uh, in these parts of day. Differentiation. A localization of a stone in different parts of urinary tract can cause different symptomatic signs. And you should remember about that. Upper urinary tract uh, damaging, it's a crescendo like pain in the lower back that radiates through the corresponding groin and testicles in males and labia major in females. So, uh, if a person has a problem with the kidney, he may have, uh, he or she may have problem uh, with pain in his genitals. So, a differentiated diagnostic. Mid ureter, it's a damaging of middle part of urinary tract. This pain tends to radiate to the lateral lower back of abdominal region. Problems in distal ureter near the ureteral vesicle junction can be um, accompanied with symptoms of bladder irritation. Also, its frequency and urgency of genital pain. Here you can see localization of pain according to appearing and localization of the stone. Or also it may be only back or abdominal pain accompanied with genital pains. The next one is fever. It can be rarely presented except when a urinary tract infection accompanies obstruction. So if a person doesn't have um, infection, fever can't be present. Pulse rate and blood pressure, however, may be elevated as a result of the pain and agitation caused by the renal colic. Also, you should remember that patient can't be, uh, not every per, uh, patient can't be with only one disease, it can be secondary diseases, for example, arterial hypertension, and it may be another one section of disease, but accompanied with renal colic, so you should control the diagnostic and methods of treating according to this uh, state of a patient. So everything is very individual and you should remember a lot of things from medical classes you've attended, so be attentive. Uh, the patient's abdomen is generally flat and soft in palpation with moderate deep tenderness on palpation where the calculus is lodged. Some patients also have extensed, uh, extensive hyperesthesia of the abdominal well, either anteriorly or posteriorly, according to the localization of the stone. So if a person has a pain in the uh, higher part of abdomen, it may be a sign of um, localization of calculi in the kidney or uh, upper part of ureta. And if it's the lower part of abdomen, so we can see that it may be problem in ureteral vesicle junction or in bladder. The cost of vertebral area may be tender to percussion. So we can check positive Pasternatsky symptom. Mechanism of its action is on this picture. Laboratory investigations are important in this case, so we can provide blood analysis, urine analysis, deep stick test, steam test. Uh, we should check uh, the concentration of such substances as calcium, phosphates, citrates, rates, and parrot hormone. You should remember about that from previous slides because it, this can be uh, problems, um, can um, 
enhance the risk of appearing stones. So, in blood analysis, we check calcium, albumin, albumin, creatinine, and urates. In urine analysis, it's a fast and morning spot urine sample. We we'll also can check some uh, leukocytes, erythrocytes, if it's uh, leukocyteria or hematuria, and other one. Dipstick test uh, shows us pH and the presence of leukocyte bacteria. So, and also it can be stone analysis after excretion or extraction of this one from the organism, we can know the nature of this stone. Urinalysis is a test usually revealed either macro or microscopic hematuria, the presence of erythrocytes in the urine. Also, hematuria may be absent in complete obstruction or microhematuria may be present in symptomatic partial obstruction. About hematuria, we talked about um, several slides in previous lectures. Peoria, it's increased amount of leukocytes in urine may accompany obstruction, uh, even in absence of identifiable infecting organism. If severe peoria is present, infection should be considered. Also in female, because urethra uh, of female, female is short and the pathway of microorganism in um, this case is more commonly spread, since the stone may be a secondary to infection. This is how pH, pH dipstick test works. Uh, here you can see the mechanism of uh, not laboratory investigation. It's a plain X-ray. A routine examination involves a plain abdominal film of the kidneys. Here you can see the structure of stroma. It's a, um, pelvis and stones in colitis, uh, ureters. Here you can see one of them and here not very visible. Here stone too. And uh, bladder of course not very good presented here shown. Uh, at least 90% of renal stones are radiopaque and therefore really visible in a plain film of the abdomen. However, uric acid stones are not visible with this X-ray method. Urography is the next one method can be used and it uses imaging and contrast material to evaluate and detect blood in the urine kidney or bladder stones and cancer in the urinary tract. All unusual appearance in urinary tract can be detected by this one. Here you can see mega ureta in the upper part of the ureta and um, stones here. It's a localization enhancement by contrast and its problem with the male ureta. It may be uh, orifice, small orifice in diameter and here you can see a computer tomography accompanied with urography. Um, it may be uh, also urography with conventional x-ray is known as intravenous pyogram IVP and urography also often performed in um, a combination of computer tomography and MRI. Remember that pyelography mustn't be carried out in the following patients. It's contra um, processes with, such as allergy to contrast media with uh, S creatinine level more than uh, 200 nanomoles per liter. It's a problem not only with kidney but with HEPR2, um, two, liver 2. On medication with metformin, it uh, Medicaid, this drug is used to uh, treat um, diabetes and with such case as myelomatosis. Special examination they be carried uh, such as retrograde and enterograde pyelography. You should remember these methods from the course of radiology. Also, it's retrograde pneumopyelography or cystography, spiral or helical unenhanced computer tomography and scientography. Here you can see the last one's pictures. At this picture you can see a great stone in the urinary bladder. And um, here you can see normal kidneys and ureter, ureters and bladder. 
Diagnostic image and due to ultrasonography. In patients in whom it's not possible to obtain intravenous urograph, ultrasonic evaluation is more commonly spread. Here you can see stone in the um, stroma, in the calyces of kidney. Here you can see um, maybe inflammation of uh, the kidney or during to a summer period in it and also renal stone here. Diagnostic imaging, um, cystoscopy can show us too. It shows swallowing the ureter orifice in lower location of the stone and it may also particularly uh, partially project out uh, to the orifice. Here you can see little stones or more uh, large stones in the ureter. You can see here the wall of, uh, or not ureter, but bladder. And here this is a process of cystoscopy used uh, this instrument. And here you can see anatomical structures and uh, uh, how it works. These pictures can show us different kinds of stones. It may be stervites, it may be citrate uh, or calcium stones, and this is uh, the um, metal detail which is accompanied by different stones.